Internet from space. How cool is that? Today we test Starlink. Two Starlinks from two locations. Find out if it's for you in today's episode. Three, two, one. Welcome to Your Space Journey, where we venture into the future of space exploration. Your journey begins now. Thanks for joining me for Your Space Journey. I'm your host, Chuck Fields. Today I have some exciting special news for you. Um, I was able to test Starlink, a wonderful program that provides satellite internet. Uh, right now, they actually have the goal of sending up 42,000 satellites eventually to give us high-speed internet from space, which is really cool. I signed up for this beta program uh, over a year ago. It finally got off beta a couple months ago. Finally got my Starlink units in the past month or so, and I was able to test them from two locations, one in Central Florida and then one in the Indianapolis area. So what I'm going to share with you now is uh, first we're going to go down to my floor location. I'm going to do the unboxing and show you what I experienced setting up the internet down there. Then after that, we're going to go back to Indianapolis. I'm going to show you how Starlink performed out there. Stay tuned. Your space journey. Hey everyone. Well, it's, it's been a while. Uh, I ordered the Starlink unit uh, a year ago and uh, just got it uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, unfortunately, is I actually got it um, assigned to a location that's uh, a thousand miles away from my home address. It's sort of our little vacation property here in Central Florida. So what, what painfully was a, a couple weeks wait is I uh, was not able to get the Starlink tested in the in our home area uh, because to do that I'd have to get it reassigned to the home area, which would take me off of the list down here in Central Florida which means I would have no guarantee of when I'd be able to subscribe again. So I waited, uh, it's been, oh my gosh, actually three weeks that I've had this thing sitting. So I, I thought I'd do the unboxing and I'm gonna take it uh, right out here and uh, in Central Florida now and hook it up and see how it works. So again, this is the Starlink unit. Uh, this is version two, so pretty excited about this. Um, again, we have a wonderful SpaceX symbol here on the packaging, which I love. And forgive the dogs outside, so we'll start opening this up. Uh, we've got part of the stand here. And I should say that the um, another kind of painful lesson that you have to learn is, depending on how you're gonna mount this, uh, for any Starlink accessories, uh, you get to order those at the time that you get your unit. Um, so unfortunately I had an order for a a ground pole and then even an ethernet adapter because as we'll see in a second this does not have an ethernet adapter that comes with this version 2. I see you have to order that it's about $20. Uh, the ground pole I think was about $50. Again these prices might have gone up. They've raised all the Starlink uh, prices lately anyway. Um, but you order those and they of course ship out at different times so you could have your Starlink units and as of this time I have not do not have my ground pole um, nor my ethernet. Uh, adapter. So that was kind of a pain for us. But so here we go. Here is a version two. Uh, McDishy flat face is uh, a little more rectangular than our first circular one. So we'll set it here very carefully. Um, it has some very simple directions that you might be able to see now. So basically, you just point it up. Uh, plug it in and then check out the Starlink app to make sure you're in the right location. I did already do the Starlink app before I ordered it just to, or as it was getting closer to make sure that I have a location in my yard that's free of obstructions and good to connect. We use that a little bit. Um, we do have with Starlink 2, we have 75 feet of cord has a uh, just regular plug that you plug it into, and then has your Wi-Fi unit here, which is very nice. And I've heard, that, heard this been update, updated as well, uh, to where I think the previous units were falling over a lot easier than this one. Uh, got a nice little cool SpaceX symbol. Um, so anyway, 75 feet of cord, hopefully that will reach to my test location before I permanently install this thing. Um, so we'll see from that. So I'm gonna go install this, and I'll take you out and let you watch that too. All right, here we are in the location. Again, I used my uh, Starlink app to find the location with the least amount of obstructions. Do have a little bush there, but that won't matter too much, especially mounting on a ground pole would be much higher. 
but we're going to test it from here. Um, one thing worth mentioning is this is again version two, and this is about half the weight I understand from version one. I think this might be eight pounds, version one might be 16 pounds. So, anyway, we'll see how this goes. I guess. clicks, locks into place. And again, we have about 75 feet of cable here with the Wi-Fi station. So I'm gonna try this out and uh, report back to you soon. All right, well, I had a really good experience playing with Starling today. Um, hooked it up and did some did some really cool testing with it. Um, first off, hooking it up was, was simple again. But uh, the hard part again, patience-wise, is you have to kind of let it connect and patiently wait for um, that internet to, to sort of stabilize, I guess. And I, I even got concerned. I, I looked at support because I plugged it in. I wasn't seeing my network. And then I saw the Starlink network connect to it, but it said could not connect. So I had some issues, uh, went to just the support frequently asked questions, said check the power on the router. And this was, uh, again, the new router, the phase two router. So the power light is on the bottom of it. And I confirm, yes, that's on. So I'm like, okay, good. I have something coming in here, but still had to wait before I finally got internet access. And what got me to understand that is in the FAQ, it said it could take up to 20 minutes. So patience, you have to have patience with that. So, so I did wait, it did connect to the internet. Um, I had a little issue where it dropped down and, and came back up. And as far as I can tell, it sort of seemed to be sort of that initial phase when it was connecting and I don't know what was going on there, but it seemed that first hour that I had a little bit of, a little bit of hiccups. Uh, but I persevered, and, and the internet signal got real steady. So I started doing some testing on it. Um, started playing 4K videos uh, without any incidents. Uh, started doing 4K videos on multiple devices, on two devices. I just did two, so it wasn't a real huge speed test. But the 4K videos were smooth. They were working great. Um, also did some FaceTime testing. I uh, called some friends out of the blue and and let them know hey I'm, I'm i'm recording this or whatever but anyway same thing that the biggest comments were wow you know you're you're really in sync you know when your lips are moving we can hear the voice at the same time we even clapped our hands to make sure the sound was coming through so no no lag on that end um one other benefit that i thought was really cool is just the wi-fi router that comes with this starlink version 2 is so powerful um the one i had uh before uh was not Starlink, obviously, but I could barely on, on the edges of my property, once I went outside the backyard, for instance, um, the signal would just go down to hardly anything and I'd lose Wi-Fi uh, within, say, 25 feet of the back of my property, um, back of the home uh, in the backyard. So with the Starlink, um, I could go and actually circle the entire perimeter of our land. Again, not, not quite as huge. And only when I got to the to the farthermost edge of the land compared to where the router was, where there was a slight hiccup of the Wi-Fi signal. But other than that, it was all through my home uh, and then most of the property. So that was pretty darn impressive. Something I wasn't expecting was a stronger Wi-Fi unit. I thought for sure I'm going to have to buy uh, a, a repeater or access point or something like that. But uh, I don't think that'll be necessary on that. Um, overall, I, I'm pretty impressed. Uh, one of the concerns, you know, my wife, wife and I work remotely, so we would ideally love to test this with a Zoom meeting uh, because we did get some drop-offs, you know, where one time it dropped off for eight seconds, um, another time for a little bit longer. And it's like, okay, well, how would that affect a Zoom meeting? Would it be inconvenient? Um, would it be complete access where um, I, you can't hear your voice or see your video? Um, so that would probably take some more testing just to get comfortable with that. Also, I'd really like to hear how it would um, operate for VPNs. Uh, a lot of us, again, in the IT field, we're connecting, well, any field. Uh, sometimes you want that secure VPN connection. You know, what happens if the VPN goes, internet goes down? Do you have to reconnect with VPN? Yes. But how long does that take and, and will it affect uh, meetings or your remote session with the computers and that sort of thing? So that, that's something to keep an eye out for on that um, overall speed um, it's, it's it's okay I mean this unit again Starlink is designed for areas that don't have much internet access um, or at least many options and so Starlink will give you that uh, well over 100 megs per second I did several tests um, never went past I don't think 150 was a uh, download 
uh, megs per second was my top speed. Upload again. Uh, I've, I've heard people say this and they said since uh, with the recent announcement of the Starlink premium plans that are available for the regular plans, it seems like upload has gotten slower. And I would agree. Uh, I, I don't think I ever broke 10 megs per second upload. So that's a little concern. Again, wondering how that would be when I'm video streaming uh, during meetings. Um, but other than that, I, I, I've been really impressed. Um, it seems to be solid. Uh, the FaceTime calls I had, I mean, I kept them straight going on for, you know, 20 minutes and, you know, not a problem at all. Uh, so I've been really impressed with the unit. So again, if you're in an area and you don't have many internet options out there, many high-speed internet options, Starlink is definitely a cool option. It's a shame that prices increase a little bit, but again, I think it's now $110 a month. Um, it's unlimited, which is fantastic. So I think that's you know a really good deal, especially when you compare it to other satellite providers. Uh, it's also really cool talking to people and realize, hey, I'm talking to you basically from space because it's beaming the signals to space and back which I think is real incredible. Um, one last thing I did want to say that I did note that I thought was really strange is the download speed seemed to increase by the demand uh, that I faced on it. Now, not a scientific test here, but as I started streaming multiple 4Ks, it seemed like my upload, uh, uh, upload and download speed increased accordingly, which I thought was kind of strange because once I disconnected um, one of the 4Ks, my download speed went down a little bit more. And then when I disconnected the other uh, 4K video that was playing, my download speed went down just a little bit more. So, I mean, that could warrant some full testing, maybe maybe just sort of a supply and demand, you know, go where the need is, you know, because the satellites only have this much bandwidth, right? They have to distribute that accordingly. Um, so anyway, I've rambled enough. Um, I do think Starlink is great. I think it's very easy to set up, very easy to configure. I did go in and change my network name and password. Uh, which again was seamless. It takes just a, a minute for it to reset and to reboot with that name. So that worked out really well. So I think you'll be happy with Starlink. If it's something you want to get, I encourage you to try it out. Meanwhile, thanks for letting me ramble on about how much I love it. I'm a tech guy. I'm a space guy. You put them together, you got Starlink. I love it. Hope you do too. Your space journey. Yeah, the overall experience for Florida for Starlink was incredible. I was really impressed. Uh, we had the unit operating, and, and again, after that stabilization of the first couple of days, it was just rock solid. We noticed no problems at all in streaming. Anything downloading was fantastic. It functioned well on all our devices, and we had everything hooked up. We had iPads, iPhones, computers. It was fantastic. Um, however, the only thing, only drawback I would say for Starlink down in the Florida location is I'm only there part of the time. So for me. I really like to go into vacation mode, you know, turn the internet off while I'm not there. Unfortunately, Starlink doesn't yet have that option. Uh, so as coincidence would be, as we started back from Florida, I got notification that my in and out of Starlink was ready to be delivered. So of course I said, yes, let's test that one out. Here's what we found out. All right, here we are with Starlink version two. Um, we are now in our second location. Uh, I'm in basically Greater Annapolis right now. Uh, you can tell by the TV transfer behind me, we're within the city limits now with this uh, other Starlink uh, I now have for this location. Um, pardon the dog barking in the background. We're definitely in the city, lots of uh, houses and homes in the area. So we're gonna give this a go. So I just literally just put it out here. I have the cable running inside the house temporarily. Uh, I'm gonna hook it to the modem next and see what kind of speeds we're getting. Now, after hooking up the uh, unit in Indianapolis, uh, I was I was really impressed. Um, one thing that we ran into is when I chose the location for it, um, according to their app, it was 96% obstruction free, which I thought, okay, this is great. It even said, this is a decent location for your Starlink. Um, what I found though, is after uh, first couple days even, uh, we were getting notice that there was an obstruction every seven minutes. And unfortunately we had a tree on the property. I can't exactly cut down the tree and I couldn't really find a better location for it. So that was kind of a, a deal breaker for it, for us. Um, however, downloading again uh, was, was no problems at all. I did notice there were slightly less speeds that we were getting download speeds compared to the central Florida location. I'm not sure if that's a saturation issue because both Indianapolis and the central uh, Florida location are pretty much saturated. They're on a wait list. If you look at starlink.com forward slash map. So that was something that was concerning. 
Uh, the other part that was concerning for me again is upload. For work, again, I need strong uploads. Um, so we were very seldom getting over 10. Sometimes it would jump up to about 15, but most of the time I was getting like three to five uh, megs per second upload. Uh, so when you're doing, again, Zoom meetings, Teams meetings, a lot of screen sharing, um, for me personally, for, for working, for my wife and I being comfortable with that, that's probably too low of an uh, upload speed. However, the unique thing is the Indianapolis location actually tested at my parents. And they obviously don't do much uploading, but they do a lot of video streaming. And this functioned beautifully. Uh, it, they were streaming 4K. Uh, it, was, it was just it was fantastic. So it's kind of a business case, uh, or use case. Um, I thought if you're in a field where um, you just want to download and you're not concerned about upload speeds, I think Starlink, Starlink is fantastic. However, uh, if you have access to other internet providers like Xfinity, it's going to be um, not as fast as Xfinity. But if you're in a location that you have very limited access to high-speed internet, I think Starlink could be a perfect fit. Now, you could keep going on the testing. I, I always wonder, it's like, okay, in the Midwest, in Annapolis, you know, we have some pretty bad storms. So what happens if Starlink is damaged by hail? Uh, is the unit going to be, <laughs> is it going to take a long time to replace? I, I don't know. And, and what do you do in the meantime? So that's, that's kind of a concern. Um, the other thing is, as I set this up for my parents, I have to say Starlink support is good, but they also seem to be slightly overwhelmed now. There's, there's like 250,000 customers right now, and all the support, they have great FAQs on their site, but when you submit a support request, it generally can take several hours, if not up to a couple of days, to get a response back from them. And again, it is all email. And so uh, concerned about my parents being able to uh, respond uh, via email. I'm sure they much prefer a phone number to call. Uh, I ended up being the, the IT support for them, liaison for Starlink. So that's that was a little um, stressor, I guess. Uh, but other than that, it's still kind of a cool thing. You hook it up, you point it up. It's easy. It's certainly easy to install. It's certainly easy to, to get the internet download working great. Uh, it was a pretty solid um, internet as long as you don't have a lot of obstructions around. Uh, but overall, I think it's great. Uh, anyway, so that was it. So two Starlinks, two locations. Uh, Starlink, again, functioned great. I uh, highly encourage you to check it out if you're struggling to find a good high-speed internet service provider around you. If your options are limited, I think you should definitely check out Starlink. Go ahead and sign up now, though, because it takes a while to get it. But when you get it, I think you'll love it. Thanks again for joining me today. We'll see you next time. God bless.